what's new in this new version of Flux. I will see that we have a new tool for 3D rotating machines in Flux. I will see some new improvements and new features in the 3D modeler. I will see some interesting things in uh, to, to get faster and get more accurate results, some physical model and so uh, some distribution. And we'll see some new things about multi-physics coupling. About the 3D modelers, you might have seen last year in Flux 12, uh, the first version of the modeler. So this first version was uh, uh, the first time we could create fully parameterized 3D models uh, in a few clicks and do some uh, a lot of operations, like uh, doing some Boolean operation, union, subtraction, uh, assembly. You can make some fillet, chamfers, uh, extrusions, uh, some small simplifications. So this was already a big uh, step for us to have a, a concrete 3D modeler. And now, in Flux 12 of 1, we try to consolidate this modeler uh, by making it more fast and more robust. And we worked also a lot on uh, some customer's case to be able to import every geometry correctly and to help the mesh uh, going uh, better. And we added some new features. Concerning the CAD import capabilities, we are now able to import uh, the latest formats uh, coming from all the native formats like uh, SolidWorks, CATIA, uh, Pro Engineer, or any uh, kind of uh, format. So now we are able to import the latest format. We have a new DXF import based on ASIS now, which is more better than the last we had. And as I said, we have a lot improved the automatic healing during the import, so that uh, even a complex geometry is now uh, all, almost all of the time uh, correctly imported with no uh, errors. And then you can mesh it more easily because uh, a lot of work has been done in parallel between CAD imports and the mesh generation, so that now uh, we have lots of complex cases that can go directly from import to mesh without doing anything. So it's a very big step for robust, complex imports and meshing. To show you how uh, we can use the modeler, I will uh, try a simple example of an actuator. Uh, in which I do an import, I simplify some details, and I create a symmetry, translation, uh, some physics, and then the parametric. Open a base project in which I already defined some regions, but not so much. No mesh, no nothing. So I open the modeler, I can import a new file. So this is an actuator. And you can see I have created eight volumes here inside the output. But uh, in this project, I have so one object, but eight volumes. But I should have only uh, seven, because there is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this means that I have a small volume somewhere that I am. I, I don't know already where it is. So in order to do this, I can uh, detect the small volumes like this, and then if I do this, I can see here I have a small volume here because of the screw, uh, which means the screw is maybe bigger than the hole, but so we have an interference and this created a small volume. So I can uh, remove this small volume by merging the volume with the external volume uh, of, uh, of the screw. So here very simply, I can simplify this small detail which have been which can be uh, difficult to mesh sometimes. So also, in this case, uh, I have this volume, which I don't want because it's a plastic volume and it has no interest for me. So I can remove one volume without uh, deassembling the whole project. I can directly uh, remove the volume and let it as one object. So now uh, I can see here I have some uh, small details. So if I want to mesh these small faces here, I will have some problems because it's very thin. So what I can do is to remove the detail and use the new function, which is a remove face. And now I can select uh, these small faces like this, and selecting all the surrounding faces thanks to uh, this uh, shell selection. So it will select all the small faces and it will remove everything so that now I don't have any more details here. It's very simple and very fast. Uh, I can do the same thing here on the head of the screw. I can remove this face. 
in the same way. It's very simple and it simplifies the geometry. So now what I can do is to, uh, to simplify even more this geometry, I can use the defeaturing features, uh, which are the defeaturing of the fillets. So I can remove all the fillets and all of the holes inside my, my uh, project. So this fillet, for example, or this fillet can be removed very easily. And I can remove also this kind of hole, which I don't need for my computation. So directly, I have a simplified model. Uh, now, what I can do is, uh, for example, to cut my project in two, because I have a symmetry here, and I can reduce the size of the domain. So I can choose uh, this object. I can cut it into two pieces. There, I can see the sections, which means that uh, uh, I can choose to cut only one uh, object, for example. But I would cut everything in this case. So now, if you look at this, I have a more objects, so I can remove like half of the geometry. Now I can work only with this geometry. So what's important in this case is to make move a movement of this part. So maybe I wanted to uh, have a bigger part. So for example, if I want to uh, extrude this face, I can do it directly without uh, drawing anything. I can only do this. And you can see the preview of what I could do uh, to uh, pro extend this kind of volume. But I won't do this. I will only uh, uh, apply a translation. So I can choose to translate this volume, 0, 0. I can set up a parameter. So with the formula here, new parameter, I can choose uh, to move and be 10. So directly inside the modeler, I use the parametric uh, to define the, the translation here, you can see. And I can, of course, I can uh, change the, the value of this parameter. OK, so now my uh, geometry is ready. So I just have to quit the modeler context. I can create an infinite box to uh, surround my pieces and create an air volume. So there you can see the infinite box. Uh, I will add a symmetry like this. And now I have only half of the domain. I can uh, complete the infinite box so that I have all the volumes and all the faces. And then I can assign the regions. So to select the volume belonging to the infinite box, I use this small arrow, selection by infinite box, infinite box, sorry. Yeah, all of these volumes are air. Uh, now this is the mobile. This is the coil. And the three volumes are the supports. I will set the infinite box invisible. There, so I have my project. I can mesh it directly. So this uses the default uh, mesh generator, which is uh, automatic uh, generator assigned according to the geometry. So it will mesh uh, more accurately where the geometry is uh, smaller. And uh, in this kind of example, it's very, very powerful because it meshes uh, directly with a good mesh. So here you can see the mesh. It's very good for this kind of device. Uh, now I can define the materials inside my project, so I have air, which is a air vacuum region, it's okay. I have the coil here, which is already predefined with a conductor. I only need to orient the coil to make it uh, the external terminal, which is here. And for the mobile and the support, I have to uh, create a material, so I can use this material of the region, import from material manager, and it will open me the material manager of Flux. Uh, it will open me the CEDRAT database of materials here. And the Flux project uh, is here. So I can only take some materials, for example, the, them. I can compare their BH curve directly here. But in this case, I want only this one. 
I can take it, drag it, and drop it inside the project directly. And I can close the material manager. OK, so now my material is inside the project. Click OK. And for the support, I use the same uh, material as well. So now my project is ready to be solved. A scenario in which I make move uh, from 0 to 14. The step value, OK. And in this case, I can solve directly the parametric study, or I can use the di distribution of computation, which is here. If I only click this, then when solving the scenario, I will use the distribution that is uh, set by default. So you, you can see in a few clicks that I can uh, define this kind of project from a small operation inside the modeler, which is very uh, easy to use and uh, so fast. We have a lot of macros, so around 150 macros. And we added some more macros this year, some capacitance matrix computation, which can be useful uh, instead of going to solve a lot of electrostatic studies. Some demagnetization in 3D, uh, doing some four other coils, like coils like this, which are already done in thanks to a macro. Uh, you can create a 2D project from a 3D project uh, doing a cut. So if you choose a cut plane, you can create directly a 2D project from this. And on and on, we have some more macros going on. We also added some examples from uh, SRM 2D, so synchronous relentless machine uh, inside the supervisor, a magnetization case, and so on. And we also updated all the tutorials using the sketcher and the modeler so that you can learn how to uh, do all these examples with the latest geometry tools. You would also uh, benefit from a latest Jiton update, which means that very soon, thanks to, thanks to this update, uh, you will have NumPy and SciPy available as a libraries for Python users. Also, that we have only Flux 62, 64 bits, and we also can support Windows 10. Now, to conclude about all of this uh, presentation of new features in Flux 12.1, you, you could see that we made some work for uh, making the modeler more robust and more efficient. And uh, you might enjoy uh, the import capabilities that are very higher than uh, before. So you can uh, trust them very, uh, very strongly. Uh, you will enjoy the fast and easy way to, to, to compute uh, distribution, to run adaptive solving computations. And uh, if you are motor designers, you will enjoy the overlays which will be available for people already owning the overlays. It's not something new that you have to buy. If you are already the overlay in 2D, you have the overlay in 3D. And we had some more precise models for induction heating, for currents in solid conductors. And what um, is very important also for all the machine designers is a value acoustic for ANSYS mechanical exports. So we hope that you will enjoy this plug spot of one as we do, and uh, that you keep innovating in 3D uh, thanks to Flux.